Kojak is likely a name that you're not too familiar with, but I think with this new album here from the man, Town's Dead, I think you should be making sure that you become familiar with this artist because uh, this, for me, is a really good and strong introduction to his music. An Irish rapper who is someone that I haven't been familiar with before, and Irish rappers in general? Uh, struggling to name many, actually. Perhaps that's a flaw of mine. I don't know what kind of scene rap has in Ireland, honestly, but based off this album from Kojak here, it's making me wonder if there's plenty of artists that you, we should be knowing more about because uh, this is a stellar release. The man touches many bases with this album in terms of topics, uh, whether it's mental health, whether it's social class, whether it's uh, wealth, whether it's the kind of uh, life that he lives in the city, in the town that he's from, the perhaps, uh, I guess, gentrification of the town, or maybe just the low uh, socioeconomic opportunities that you get from that town, to suicide, uh, to relationships. Uh, the, man, the man ain't messing around. The, he is touching all bases with this album here, and uh, he does it in a very vivid and detailed way. Immediately from the opening track, Heartbreak, you get instantaneous Avondale Bowling Club vibes with the jazzy instrumental that really consumes the song, the pensive and reflective lyrics, and the pensive and, and reflective vibe of the track too. The song just really reeks of, you know, a man just telling you a story or telling you how things are from his perspective, which is basically what he does on many of these tracks. But he really does have such a Tom Scott of Avondale Bowling Club approach, not only in the way his raspy delivery comes through and the accent really shines as well, his Irish accent is just permeating throughout this album. It's very heavy and thick, but also in just the way he writes songs from the perspective of someone who is just, you know, of a background that hasn't had the most opportunities in life. He's experienced many uh, tragic things through not necessarily any fault of his own, really just through the surroundings, the environment that he was brought up in. The final words of this track as well, you know, nobody see nothing if they ask you. Kind of like talking about like snitch culture and things like that. You know, something might have happened in the town but no one really knows, or they pretend that they don't know what's going on. The track Town's Dead is a fantastic track, which is very, very eerily similar to Doorman by Slow Tie. There's such a, <laughs> an approach to this track that I think has got to be influenced by Slow Tie with this one. Uh, and I think that's one of his best tracks, Slow Tie. So anything that reminds me of that is only a good thing. Once again, he's got the raspiness in his delivery, a speedy flow this time around over this really jaggedy and bustling beat. It's a great little track. Talking about his home life, his town, uh, the line where he says the town's not dead, it's just dormant. Um, it's a pretty good line. And then just all the little lyrics to just kind of like refer referencing the state of where he's from and how it really is just uh, in some ways sort of a shithole, but it's not necessarily, you know, the people in the town's fault that it's become that way. Another track with a jazzy instrumental that consumes it is Schmelly. Really clever lyrics on this one as well. I really like the line where he says, uh, I remembered when I learned that that God was the villain and, you know, every time he tries to call him up, he just doesn't answer the phone anymore, kind of. Uh, touching on this idea that hope is just completely gone and even to the point where even God himself is not even there to support you anymore and if he ain't there, who is? Once again, touching on the state of things that his town um, brings and his town is unfortunately flooded with uh, just kind of like talking about the idea of walking through the street at night and just not really knowing what's going to happen, what's going to, you know, turn the corner. There's a group of kids over there, but it's all right. They're just, you know, doing the same shit, different day. They're not actually going to harm you. I think Black Sheep does a really good job of portraying that paranoia. Walking through the streets of a really kind of scary 
uh, I don't know, just just uh, ridden with crime area kind of thing. I, I think I think there are people out there that don't actually appreciate <laughs> what it's like, you know, to actually experience that. You know, I remember one time being with my friends in an area that wasn't really the best and I think it was Halloween and we were being followed by a group of guys. They were throwing eggs at us. Like, it doesn't sound like the worst thing in the world. I'm sure there's worse things out there to experience, but like when you're like 14, 15, any age really, you don't know what's gonna happen next. And I think he does a good job of just portraying that in this track. But again, it's just kids being kids sort of thing. You know, like he says, same shit another day. They don't actually do anything in the end, but that fear does consume you. I like as well on the chorus where he's talking about, you know, swung for the pleasure, swung for the pain, uh, swung for his friend who OD'd on cocaine. He just has a really interesting perspective. Like I feel as though he's a man that will always bring interesting stories to his music for many years. Like I feel like some of the things that he's talking about on this album is really just scratching the surface and there's so many more things he could tell us in future albums. Jinty Boy Blues is certainly one of my favorite instrumental tracks, reminding me of something like The Streets or Loyal Karna. Got that kind of like, once again, jazzy sort of, uh, approach but also like the somber tone of a sad streets track uh this time around depicting a breakup touching on relationships here the way the track progresses from verse to verse i think is really well done and the the, the most memorable line i gotta read this man <clears throat> said you're sorry you know it's a one-off but i'm doubtful I bet you didn't seem apologetic with your mouthful. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh yeah, we know we know why this track uh, ended up in a breakup. Ooh, that lyric, man. Oh. <laughs> oh. There are a couple of tracks like Rover and then part two that have like these modulated vocals that uh, you can see that Kojak is trying to experiment with sound and ideas and stuff like that, which I appreciate. On Rover, it has this kind of like slow R&B-ish vibe, which I don't really mind. I wouldn't say it necessarily fits that well in between some of the tracks, but I think on part two, he manages to do what he was trying to achieve, I think, with the vocal manipulation thing so much better. I mean, the vocals are very effective here, and then the hard as hell delivery, the pace that, 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 that this track has is really impressive. I think it's a really hard hitting track. And I think if he's gonna do this with the vocals, I'd keep it in like this style. Fallen For It is another track as well with like the really grimy, dirty beat. I like the way he can slow things down to the pensive, thought provoking stuff with the jazz instrumentals and then just hams it up for tracks like this. He's got a nice amount of diversity and I think it's uh, really great to see. Sex and Drugs has one of the catchiest hooks on the album. It's pretty simple, but effective once again. I'm talking about the lifestyle of friends around him and Casio is one of two tracks that I think need bringing up because uh, it has a really hard hitting story. Really like how he starts this off painting a picture of him and his friend at the early days, just playing around with raps, playing around with beats, that kind of thing. And then he sends him the song and you know, his friend just can't get enough of it. He really sees something in Kojak and Kojak has this doubt in himself that he just can't really shake off and thinks that he's never gonna be good enough. And I think if I'm following the story correctly, later in the track, that same friend one day is just, at the edge, the complete edge. He calls up Kojak. He's, you know, stood at the train tracks, basically ready to jump, has no idea what to do, is saying that maybe prison is the way forward for him because he can't just cope with the way things are, which is a really interesting perspective for the lives of the people that do commit crimes or even petty crimes because sometimes to them, that's just the way out. And you know, obviously he's even willing to commit suicide because of how poor his life has become. He is talked out of it uh, from Kojak, basically saying, you know, there's actually nothing wrong with you and the expectations that are placed on you to, you know, become better are actually really hard and it's really difficult to find the motivation. Look, I think I'm talking about the song in a way that doesn't really sell how the track is, is 
performed honestly it's a really well put together track honestly one of the best rap songs i've heard this year incredibly potent and still goes back like circles back to the first chorus which is referencing you know he can't get enough of the song and wants to hear it again and then the other track that i mentioned because this was just one of two somehow there's two tracks that strike such a such a feeling within you on this album uh the other track is no hands this one is insanely written i think even the line as simple as it is it's actually pretty clever and the way he words it is pretty good too um how are you gonna grow if you can't stand rain the idea that you know how are you gonna get better if you can't take the bad days you know you need those bad times to get better to grow and improve that kind of thing and then on the chorus it's heartbreaking as well where he's talking about you know how he just wants his dad to be proud of him. You know, check me out. This is where I am now. I'm looking after mum while you're not here. Assumedly, his dad has passed away. And one of the biggest hitters on this album, actually, is this one line where he says, single parent household privilege could treat a woman right, but man, I never learn to fight for shit. I think that is one of the most poignant lyrics I think I've heard in rap music all year. And uh, yeah, just what a line that is. This not only shows how self-aware he is of his own life and who he is as a person, but just really speaks for I think many people out there that do have those single parent households because as much as, you know, people do try and be strong and, you know, carry on and just, you know, accept that their life is the way that it is, but that impact on you is eternal and i think he really does such a good job of on this track showing uh the impact that it's had on him in an emotional way and yeah just a, a stellar album what a what a way to introduce yourself really uh, i'm gonna have to check out some of his other stuff too i'm pretty sure he's got a few other mixtapes and albums out there but uh or maybe even eps i'm not sure i need to really explore more of this guy's music because this is really really good it's an eight out of ten it's an eight out of ten this is one of the best albums i think i've heard all year hopefully this is an introduction to him for you as well and you check him out based on my glowing review and hopefully uh, you agree with me because i really do think this is a very very good album musically really good the beats uh, the flows that he presents are really strong too his raspy delivery the uniqueness of hearing such a thick irish accent in hip-hop music i think does this album justice too um similarly to you know hearing like the the sheffield accent come through with arctic monkeys it's that kind of thing where there's just such uniqueness to the to the presence of the vocalists that comes through and then to top it off, you've got these amazing uh, lyrics throughout this album too. Really poignant tracks. Yeah, this is great. This is great. And uh, I think you should be checking it out. You really should. Thank you for watching my review. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you have a good day as well. Subscribe if you have not already. That's it. Goodbye and have a good day. Goodbye.